us stable in our family and our lives. So I'm just honored to be able to share it with you guys. Um, but yeah, I've gotten some really good responses about the infertility and stuff like that. And just women, an outpour of women contacting me and just talk, telling me about their stories. It's just such a, um, for women, it's something that's hard to talk about a lot of times. And um, Damon's the one that's kind of really pushed me to talk about it more. Um, I did a clubhouse the other day where I brought in my IVF doctor to talk about more things about infertility and things like that. And um, we discussed certain things that's been going on. And, you know, it's not always just women. Sometimes men suffer from it and there's different things that happens um, and different treatments they do. And certain, we ta even talked about the different holistic things that you can do, not just Western medicine and, you know, Everything that I had done leading up to um, go to IVF, I felt like I tried everything. Um, but there's new new things happening all the all the time. i a lot of women have sent me different things that they've tried and certain things. So it's been really interesting. I'm, I'm learning a lot right now. But um, you know, everybody has their story, and it's not even just about infertility. I think I. For me, it's just a story of pregnancy, and this was my story of my pregnancy. And every woman, ha every woman, every man, they, we all have our story of either we're gonna have a baby or we're not gonna have a baby, but that's still a story and it's still a decision. And it's something that, you know, everybody makes. So um, I hope that this is just mine. I hope it, it touches everybody to be vocal about theirs because it's a, for me, it was a big point in my life. and. You know, it was one main point of trauma in my life. So it's it's made me reevaluate a lot of different things are on a different level now for me. So, but yeah. Any trauma that's spoken out becomes healed. Yes. And uh, I thought it was a very powerful, well, I'm, I, I just love uh, food stories. Uh, but um, my wife, uh, we, we had a miscarriage. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, it's, uh, it, it's, it's life changing. Yeah. But we, we immediately, uh, immediately we uh, went back to believing. Yeah. You know, uh, immediately. But uh, it was beyond powerful. And um, I, I just thought it was a, a, a very powerful journey. Uh, I felt it, the emotions could be felt, the passions, the desires. And your determination, you, you said you knew you were going to have a baby. Yes. I think um, um, that's uh, calling those things that be not as though they were. Yes. And a lot of times we find out what we're made of when things don't go as we plan. Right. Uh, but that was very, 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 very powerful and very uh, heartfelt. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, it's a. Uh, I don't know. You were very, very welcoming and very open about your story when I first met you, and that made a huge difference in my life. And you know, I had it had maybe been two months since it happened, so just hearing that other people go through things makes such a difference. And you know, in the moment, you feel like you're the only person, but it's not that case. And it just, it just when people talk about it, the the power of therapy in any shape or form can, is just, is so healing. So, um, you know, Damon, Damon pushed me to get on stage two weeks after it happened. And, um, I'm glad he did, you know, I didn't, he was laughing or we were talking about it last night. You know, he was like, I didn't think you didn't have to get up there. And I was like, I didn't even know I had an option not to, but it was, it was, um, it was, it was a good experience and I'm happy I have that moment in time. Look who it is. He just came back from. Hey, how you hey, what's doing? Up? How you doing? Hey, 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 I miss y'all. We got to get up real soon. How'd you like to? How'd you like the show? Love it. Hey, 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 h
you know, you, you guys were with me through that journey. And, you know, actually, we first met you when we came back from Hawaii. And, you know, the bishop and, and, and you know, your wife, y'all gave us real confidence in the future because, you know, you said we have a rainbow baby. Mm -hmm. And it gave me 100% confidence that it was going to happen for us. And I know you could remember, I was like, I'm, uh, it ain't even no doubt. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I knew with y'all energy that he was protected. And, you know, that's why I thought it was important for Rocky to screen this for y'all personally because y'all were with us during the healing process and you also helped us heal. You know, during during the uh, you know the beginning of the pandemic, we were speaking damn near twice a week. You know what I mean? So, just so you know, it did help me, and I'm always grateful. And I consider your family, and I definitely appreciate it. And I'm sure there's some people that are having the same kind of journey. And for us, it's like when things happen to us, we know that the only reason why is because we're strong enough to deal with it, and that we can help people that aren't as strong. So, you know, if not only us, if, if we don't learn from it, it's definitely a loss. But also because we're strong enough, we also think if other people don't learn from it, it's somewhat of a loss as well. So we're here to, you know, whoever's been through it, talk about it, you know, help you through it, tell you how we did it. And mm -hmm. also to give you confidence that if you dream and your dream is filled with love, it realizes itself to the letter and the T. Because y'all saw us, we, we, we drink this life, and I'm actually living in my dream. But I had to dream it ahead of time to know and recognize it when it was happening. So I don't want to take over Rocky's thing, but also, she, you know, she's done, the, she done a doc, a, a season of this, what you're seeing, a, a, a syllabus, which is a, a book, a curriculum from the womb to, to three years old, and a children's book and a magazine. So, you know, I'm proud to be Stedman, Oprah's husband. I'll be Stedman. <laughs> I'll, I'll be a stay home dad. You know what I mean? I'm all good with it. And, and as you see, she do, it, it used to be me doing the Zooms. And that was her. And I love that. And I can't yeah. wait to come to every, each and every one of y'all screenings. And we're going to get back what we was doing. You know? Right. And I'm vaccinated. I got a sore arm. But I'm here. <laughs> That's right. The two shots. Need two shots. I got two shots. So yeah, you know, I know Bishop, you're gonna do your thing. I'm gonna let y'all do it. I'll be here. Oh, oh. But uh, and, and, and what's so powerful is um I learned something new today. My wife is a rainbow baby. Wow. Oh yeah. yeah. And and you know, I had forgotten about that. I was meditating on that when I heard that you were gonna do the screening and I I, I started thinking and I'm like, wow, you know, Yahweh brought it back to my remembrance that I am in between um, two miscarriages. Mm -hmm. So there's one before me and one after me. And so I'm, I'm like, wow, I am Kaya, you know? So mm -hmm. it, was, it was really powerful for me because, you know, our miscarriage, it was, it was a big blow for us. We had yeah. three little babies and they were all excited to have another baby and then it didn't happen at that moment. We were all in a room there was no heartbeat and we were just broken, you know, but yeah. we went outside and, you know, we all, we mourned right there, cried, but then we say, you know what, we got to do something to keep this memory of what happened alive because we're going on from it. Right. We took a family photo and that photo is a monument of what happens when you believe again. And so Rocky, your story is so powerful because, you know, you were believing again and, and Yahweh answered your prayer because you were determined through your faith that yes. you were going to have the baby that you desired. And yes. now you're walking and answer prayer and it's just, it's absolutely. amazing, you know? Oh, thank mm -hmm. you so it's much. Amazing. No. Yes, absolutely. Um, I'm bring, bringing yes. tears to my eyes right now listening to your story. But that's, I, I know the feeling. I know, and, and for and children too to have to deal with it, they don't really understand that, uh, you know, Where's the baby? Right. <laughs> so um, I'm sure that was, uh, how was that? That conversation had to be hard to explain too. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure as you, you got over it as a family and that's amazing. Yes. But yeah. But yeah. 
Let me ask you, Rocky. Yeah. I don't mean to take over any no. questions, but I do want to ask, did you have the same set of doctors once you went back to try again? Or did yes. you start over with a new set of doctors? No, I wanted to, I, that was, a, it's a good question. I, I picked, I had the same ones because I wanted them to know what to look for. And I wanted to face my fears and I didn't want to, um, you know, be nervous or have some kind of something stand in my way or be un unsteady about them ever because in the end they, they were just, you know, they did their job and, and that's all that matters. And they, you know, they, they, they helped me deliver a really health, healthy, happy baby, beautiful baby. Um, I did have to go because of everything they wanted me to deliver early. So I delivered at 39 weeks. Um, I was induced and, uh, it was like a four, it was a 14 hour delivery. It wasn't too bad, but, um, two hours of pushing. And then it was my whole life changed from there, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. But yeah, that was a big, that's a good question. Cause it was you know, going into like the hospital and everything and meeting certain doctors was really nerve wracking. Every single doctor's appointment, Damon and I would be on edge. And it was, it was crazy because this time of pregnancy, it was during COVID. So Damon couldn't go into the appointments with me. So he would be sitting downstairs in the car waiting for that phone call of, is everything okay? Or like, do we have to go to the hospital? Like what's, what's going to have to happen right now? Um, so Every every doctor's visit was nerve wracking, but um, it all turned out to the best. And mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That was that was definitely something. You know, it it was it was actually amazing having the same doctors um, because I was on like a different like we had all gone through something together, so. They, it was, we were more family. It was more of a, like such a relationship that they wanted every single moment to succeed. Um, mm -hmm. You know, one of the doctors, he was kind of cold. Um, you know, he was just doing his job kind of cold initially on my first pregnancy. But the second time around, he was a different doctor. Like I, I didn't even, he, he was a totally different um, person. And I was happy I got to experience that side of him as, um, cause he, he, you know, Obviously, he had, we had been through something together, so. Right, right. Yeah. Very powerful. And it was, I was a blessing because Nicolette was there with us through the whole thing. That's why we drag her, we dragged her with us through to Hawaii because she, you know, and then, you know, Nicolette was there at the birth. We filmed the whole birth. <laughs> it's in the documentary, but, um, and then, oh, I should, I need to show you. I don't know if you guys have seen uh, the trailer for um, the doc that we just put out, but I want to try. I want. Can I show you that? Is that okay if I screen that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Let me see. One second. Just move this. I want to screen the documentary. Uh, is it? It's either in my text or. No. no. I wanted to show them the doc. I'm air dropping. Okay, so now I share the screen. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So this is the trailer for the doc. I'm feeling so shitty today. Sorry about the language. I called my doctor and she said that I need to stop. I'm 
Royalty. In the tush? In the tush. Right here? In this X? Yeah. Oh, God. I always dreamed of having a family. I never thought it would be a problem. It's something that you're supposed to be able to do. Like, you're supposed to be able to go to the bathroom. You're supposed to be able to get pregnant. You know, I just always figured it was timing. I got four kids. You know, I can't smoke that much weed. It better more dried up like that. I did not know about IVF. I wanted to share my story because people don't talk about it. Today, we're looking at the uterus. It looks beautiful, Rocky. The lining is where the embryos will go later. We are on day four, shot time. Ow! Endless, endless shots. She did great. It was a little, you know, challenging. We did it! The seed has landed! We break off! Woo! Had to come to an emergency, had to come check out because we were panicking, but the baby's just fine. Yay! Baby's good. Everything's good. Okay. Unfortunately, this is not the sort of thing that we ever see in a second trimester. Mm -hmm. Can we fix it? Yeah. It's something that women are made to feel uncomfortable with, about and, you know, shunned, you know, almost to feel like um, guilty that you're not a woman enough. You know, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to trying again. As females in our society, I think we've been taught to give a lot to other people and to always put ourselves on the back burner that our needs can last. But I would argue that that's not care is needed because it's what allows us to be there and be our best self for someone else. Getting pregnant is not easy. It's a struggle, it's a process, it's tears, it's blood, it's sweat, it's like, it's emotion. Okay, today is the first morning. Oh, I am starting back on the shots. It did. It finished. Oh, yeah. perfect. Yeah. Beautiful. Very beautiful. Awesome. So, you know, what, what, what I like to do is like reflect and, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, baby. Oh, come here, come here. I'm sorry. Um, and... You know, I, I really think about how things were a year ago and we were looking at it as a loss. And a year later, we have a baby. She's in Forbes magazine, a movie. And, and that's the way, you know, you go from the dark to the light, but you got to choose the light. And we just stayed active. And everything that was bothering us, we put into being creative and something that other people can learn from. Mm -hmm. You know, because again, powerful, powerful. like the way I look at life is, I guess, like no one goes through an untraumatized life, especially because you're always going to lose somebody at some point. Right. It's just really about how you deal with it, you know, and we always compare our situations to others. We're like, at least we got each other. Forget the money. It's the love that makes us wealthy. You know, that's right. That's right. Powerful. That's the yeah. main ingredient. Powerful. So I'm, I'm so proud of her and how strong and how good she looked while she being strong and the amount of things she was able to accomplish while being pregnant, you know? And all our concerns just went into just our dreams. So whenever you worry, just dream. Instead of worrying, dream. And then you get to work on something. You have something to look forward to. I, I, I hate the past being weight. I love the future. It makes me lean and fast, and I just learn from the past, you know? And I always know, stop it. I know that everything happens for a reason. So again, I don't like to take over her stuff. That's I'm very so, powerful, I'm my brother. I'm so proud. Very powerful. Uh, Dr. Chris, what's happening? How you doing? Hey, hey. Uh, the, the, tra the trailer was very, very compelling, very oh, provocative. Thank uh, you. Yahweh bless you and Rocky. I mean, it's just a beautiful story. And there's a lot of stigma and a lot of shame around infertility. Um, and especially people, um, women and men who experience pregnancy loss. So um, you all are doing ministry work. This is ministry work. And this is going to heal, heal those who have 
not had children. I haven't had a child, and you know, I'm I'm a woman of advanced maternal age, as they describe. Um, and just to see your your testimony is is powerful. So whenever I see Dusko, I, first of all, he's gorgeous. Thank um, you. <laughs> and whenever I see him, I just think about Yahweh. I think about how Yahweh brought the two of you two into our lives. Um, and I just think about what Yahweh's doing through you. You are you are ministering through, through this process. You are creating hope for someone else, and that's beautiful. Thank you so much. I love that. Yes. And, and Dr. Chris, we wait for you to have a super baby. We already know what that's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And we still waiting for our, we still waiting for our autograph. We just see you on TV all day. So yes. It's not even like you ain't been. I see you. I turn the TV. There you go. Yes. All channels. Well, t- tomorrow they bring her in the studio and see yeah. it. Yeah. Can, can we just say, can, can we just remind, let's rewind. And I was like, once they get a whiff of her, it's never going to stop. Remember? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. I just, yes. I, you know, <laughs> yes, good. you did. I said that once they even see you, it's going to be a wrap for everybody. And it's, you said that. And, you know, again, if you can visualize what it's going to look like oh, five years. Can you years, see what I have? What I have? I, I love it. Oh. Also, she's going to keep talking. I got something to show you all real fast, but you keep talking. Okay. Okay. Um, and watching the series, Rocky, what really stood out to me is when you said that speaking out about it is a form of therapy for you. Mm-hmm. And then you highlighted how once you spoke out about it and once you talked about your experience, you realized that you weren't alone. Yeah. And I felt like that's something that people definitely need to hear because a lot of times when people go through something traumatic or they go through a trying time in their life, they feel as if they're alone. And so for me, watching this um, gives me the impression that people are going to also be encouraged just the same way that Bishop and Apostle Pastor Passion encouraged you. Yes. So um, that's, that's what I feel that this is going to do for other people. And I think that this is something that you can definitely begin to continue to build on and, and, and take pride in being an overcomer. In. No. And like um, Dr. Pastor Chris said, Dusko is definitely gorgeous. And every time we see him, he is in prayer. And, and to see how um, that Hashem Yahweh plays a part in your encouragement is also great. So that's something that you want to continue to do for other people as well. No, thank you. Thank you. And Honestly, it was hard to te- speak out about it, and but as soon as I did, I feel so grateful. Because, you know, in the moment, you're, it's like hard, and you're like, I don't want to talk to anybody. I'd rather just stay in this dark place. But why stay in that dark place when you can go to the light? Like, it's it's easy to get stuck there. It's easy to just, like, you know, wallow in your own darkness. But when you have so when you have something to look forward to or a purpose or, you know, you want to share this with other people, it, it really makes it so much better, so much better. So it's like, I, I did have my morning time where it was, I took two weeks to myself completely. And I just, you know, Damon took my phone, Damon, he eliminated everything baby in the house. He took all triggers away for, so that like, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be triggered to be emotional or anything like took away all the apps on my phone, deleted all the apps on my phones. I would send like reminders about this week, your baby's doing that, deleted everything. And that was a huge help. Um, You know, just having a partner that's there to make with the best intent to make sure that you're getting through and being, um, being so positive and being so supportive and like walking you off that dark ledge when you need it. You know, being able to say, no, I'm not feeling, you know, this is making me emotional and being able to talk to you about it and figure out why that that moment is making you sad. And then giving you a different perspective on maybe you don't have to look at it like that. You should look at it like this. And, you know, he's he's a person that's been through significant amount of trauma in his life. Um, You know, he's you know, he lost his mother at 15 and he lost Aaliyah when he was older. And it was just like, those are huge people in his, huge people in his life. So, um, he was able to really help me, um, in this moment by, you know, telling me so many things like how to look at, how to relook at life and how to think, 
you know, not to let things make me sad, but almost to make it ha- make me happy. You know, if something is triggering an emotion, make it be a happy emotion. Try not to, don't let it be a, a sad emotion. But you're allowed to mourn and yes. you're, you're allowed to mourn. Let yourself do that mourning. But, you know, take that time and then come out of it and, and be strong for everybody else because, you know, there's no need to be in the dark room all the time. Right. And then you also um, highlighted how um, in the process you had like Nicolette there as a friend. And that's something that we're um, always highlighting and something that um, like even when Apostle Pastor Pasha and I communicate or like Bishop is always teaching the beauty of true friendship and how yep. true friendship is um, counsel. Yep. And so I believe that that's very important too to have people in your corner to push you into becoming a dreamer again after you suffer a significant loss. And I think that um, was an important part for you on your journey and for all of other people when they're struggling or they're having tough times as well. Yes, absolutely. Like I really, I really found out who the strong people were in my life in that moment. Like the ones that were really there for me um, uh, and the ones that are really there for the, for, for the right reasons. So um, yeah, it was, you know, I, I wouldn't change anything for the world. Everything happens for a reason. So, um, and I learned from every moment. But yeah. Well, I can tell you right now, uh, one of the reasons is because uh, everyone here, uh, you're ministering to them. There's some people here who uh, have been trying to have children, and uh, at this time, uh, they, they, they haven't uh, be, been able to produce that child. Mm-hmm. There's some people here. So, I think what amazes everyone here is we see how Yahweh has called you to minister to people here. Yeah. You know? That's um, and, and that's beyond powerful. Wow. Um, and once again, it just shows you how uh, Yahweh ordains things. What, mm-hmm. what I remember, because I was a privy to the conversation a do it all had with, uh, with Mr. Dash. And he said, look, I ain't coming to church, man. <laughs> he said, no, I'm coming to no effing church. <laughs> so um, we, 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 um, we, we never plan on you guys hearing a message. Yeah. You know, we plan on you hearing the music. But the thing is, to do it all and shall be taping, you did hear a message. And yeah. that, was, that, was, that was the plan. We didn't know about that. So it's, it's what I'm only in is what you don't know. And for, for instance, what you're saying now, I know that Yahweh is using you, uh, which is another uh, confirmation that you were called mm. into, pe- into people's lives on this Zoom and giving them strength where they ha- didn't get it from church, didn't get it from anywhere else. Mm-hmm. Some didn't even get it from prayer, but I know they got it from you. Aww. And that right there is powerful. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. That's That means a lot. And this week is National Infertility Week, and it is one in eight women suffer from this. And it is not an uncommon thing. And it's just something that we just don't talk about. And as women, again, you made to feel like this is the one thing that you should be able to do. You should, you can go to the bathroom naturally. You should be able to have kids naturally. And if you don't, if you can't do it, you feel broken. And, and that's how like a lot of women feel. And they're embarrassed to talk about it because you don't feel like you're, complete or something's happened and you know stuff happens in our lives like I was really dedicated to kind of focusing more on my career so I kind of put having kids towards the back burner I was like I got my grandmother's got you know nine siblings I it shouldn't be a problem uh, you know but and then trying it just didn't happen and then you know time kept on slipping away and you know I went through all the all the holistic things trying to do acupuncture did lots of herbs did lots of different things to enhance took all the vitamins I could get did stuff for him did you know tons of reiki spiritual crystals sound baths all every everything you could imagine 
and it just wasn't working. I tried, um, the next step was like Clomid and that didn't work. And then after that there was, um, IUIs and IUIs didn't work. And then it was the conversation for IVF. And, um, my advice to, you know, anyone that's putting their career, um, first right now is if you have the ability to freeze eggs, go ahead and do it. You never know what's going to happen. You never, and those are safe and they're in a, a place and, um, they're always there for your family or for anything that happens. So, um, like I told, I told, I had the conversation with my brother. I was like, you guys are, um, in your thirties. You need to, if you want to keep focusing on your career, as I say, freeze your eggs. You, you're younger now, your eggs will be at a better quality right now. And then you can do what you want and you'll always have that and just in case um so at 35 your quality of egg starts to diminish and you're actually put on like a like an old woman type of list once you get 35 and so you're just like pretty much you're you're at high risk pregnancy so like you get kind of like a whole new wristband you get ushered and treated differently at the hospital um which at 35, I don't feel like I'm old, but you know, you know, back in the day, girls, you know, girls are able to have babies at 14. So 35 is older in that re relation. Um, so I just think it's just a, it's just a very interesting topic. IBF is, it's been around for years, but it, the technology and everything that they have right now for it is really amazing and remarkable. Um, I thought it was really interesting just learning some of the statistics um, and doing like this documentary that, you know, like one and a half babies in the world are born through IVF. So that's really tiny. But, um, you know, one in eight women suffer from uh, infertility. 25% um, of women, um, like what it what are some of the, oh, so only 10 states in the country offer medic uh, insurance for um, infertility um, things. So it's only 10 out of 50 states. That's pretty low. Um, all, that's any infertility, like, help at all on your treatments. And I know even in California, I didn't get full it wasn't full insurance coverage. It was just some lot, a couple blood work tests and certain things like that. It wasn't even full coverage. So it is definitely a commitment and it's, it's something that should be talked about. But I did learn that there are grants out there for women. Um, I think it's called resolve and they are, they have grants to help women on their uh, journey and they do give away and money to help women have a baby. Um, and my doctor, she was the one that told me about it, but she does see a lot of women come in with these grants and um, certain things. So there are some things out there for women and I think there will be more, uh, the more the conversation is talked about more. And I think we just need to figure out what also is causing this decline in, um, if it's food, if it's plastic, if it's what it is that is um, causing this, because it's I don't I, I've I'm gen, I've got a person I'm got a health is wealth show I do exercises I eat good I do yoga it's like you know I'm not it's not like I eat a, bad food every day and do certain things you know I'm not I I don't think going into this, I wasn't thinking that I would be the one that would be suffering from something like that. So you never know. But yeah. Your miracle is powerful because you were determined to keep going. Like you didn't stop at one, one thing. Yeah. Like you were exploring in your journey as to how to bring your dream to life. I think that's really like, that's amazing because you were, you know, though you were fearful having gone through what you went through, you were still determined. And that takes a lot, that takes a lot of faith. Yeah. Just say, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna stop and I'm not gonna give up. I'm gonna keep pushing until I get what my dream is. Yeah. And now you, you behold 
I'm holding my dream. Yes, I'm living in my dream right now, every day. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. You can't give a transmitter. Awesome. You're a superhero walking to so many Aww, people. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Sorry, my dogs are going crazy. Um, if you have any more questions, I don't want to take up too much of you guys' time. I really appreciate you taking the time to um, come and watch this and support me. I really appreciate it so much. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions or let me know, or we can close it out, whatever you guys want to do. Well, we want to be with very thankful. And uh, things will get greater, all of us. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. So it's it's been a it's been a pleasure. It's always it's always fun. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Good. Aww. Very good to see you. You too. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. And Rocky, you guys have thank a, you for a sharing. Food. Yes. Thank you. 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 Oh no. Yeah, let me tell you right back. Hold on, hold on. Oh. So one more thing. I know it's been taking a long time. But you know, you got the hats. But I finally think, because y'all want the black socks. Whoa! Check it out! Yeah. Oh, black socks. Those are hot. Those are hot. We'll order them up. You know, this is the color y'all wanted. So we finally got back with the sock factory. I know y'all seen my CEO basketball shorts. But my fashion game has evolved. It just takes time. But we got a lot to do. I didn't forget. It's just a bunch going on right now. You know what I mean? But I feel like we got to get back up and get back on track because, you know, I'm, 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 I'm vaccinated now. I'm ready to work. <laughs> I told you I wasn't going to come outside to the vaccine. Oh, yeah. One more thing. Show to the, yeah, let me show you my, my babies. My this hey, dream. Get closer, baby. Hey. 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 Oh, hey. No dreams come true. Dreams come true. Remember that. Dreams come true. Remember, right? Dreams come true. Say hi. Say bye bye. Bye bye. Any any potty train. Was that your daughter? Yeah, that's my daughter. Was that your daughter? Yeah, that's Tallulah. She just, she just got mad tall. I don't know what happened. She's really tall. Now. Just, I, like, oh I, I had one just in time. She grew up yesterday. I don't know what happened. But but also we're real proud that he's he's a uh, he's a uh, potty trained already. So oh, wow. He, he, ne he never did a stinky in his diaper. Only breast milk and mustard breast milk was stinky. But once it was the, the food stinky, he hasn't felt one of those not one time. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, Rocky's on. Rocky's on it. <laughs> All right.